Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your source filmmaker tip of the day. Today is tip of the day number 11. Uh, as always, before I get started, a giant thank you to all of the folks who are watching and subscribing to my YouTube channel and uh, generally being the awesome people that I know you are. I've been getting a lot of questions, uh, uh, both in the comments and privately, and I have to say I'm, I'm glad that you're, that you're coming to me with all these questions, but I have to tell you I don't have enough time to answer them all, so I apologize. If I didn't get to your question, it's not because I'm being a jerk. It's because there is simply not enough time in the day for me to answer all of them. I really wish that I could. but uh, So I apologize if you didn't get an answer to your question. It's also possible I just didn't know the answer. All right, so with that, we're going to move forward with today's tip of the day, in which I will show you how to use locks to connect models to your animation to your puppets for example if you have a team team fortress 2 model or a half-life 2 model and uh, you want to put something in its hand and then have that thing stick with it as it walks around well i'm going to show you how to do that and i'm going to show you how to attach particle systems and there's going to be a little bit of animation goodness in this as well so i hope that you will uh, get um, some stuff out of this i know it's going to be fun to watch so let's move on to i'm going to create a spy here and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say hwm spy.mdl. And I'm going to select him and go to the motion editor. Several people have asked, by the way, how I can make him stick down to the ground. And that's very simple. When you, when you grab the center uh, yellow thing here with your mouse, then press the shift key, uh, the model will stick to the ground and will follow the world geometry. So basically, wherever the floor is, he'll stick there. So. Uh, it's a useful little trick if you want to just put something on the ground. So let it go. Press enter. Now I'm going to go over here to the spy. And this is a trick that I actually learned from uh, a gentleman named Mr. Ugly. It's M-R-U-G-L-E-H on YouTube. And I strongly recommend you go check out his videos. In particular, one where he shows you how to create a lifelike effect on a model um, and what he does is he shows how when you have a model that is statically posed and maybe you've done some animation on its arm or on its face or something like that uh, he shows how you can import an animation to just the body and give it a lifelike effect of breathing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to do it ahead of time and i'm going to import uh, the animation nope not that one the selection menu idle so he'll be just kind of like standing there. And when I press play, we can see that he's slightly lifelike. Well, that's better than having him just stand there like a, like a statue. Uh, and using a technique like that, definitely go look at Mr. Ugly's uh, uh, YouTube video. I also linked it on my channel, and I will put a link to it in the description of this video because it's definitely worth watching. Uh, I, I learned something watching that video, and I, I would recommend you take a look at it. So... Now I have a spy, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cigarette in the spy's hand, but he's already got a cigarette in his mouth. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to expand unknown here, and we're going to find hide sig. If you haven't played with the spy model much, this is a cute little thing. Watch what happens when I drag this slider to the right. <laughs> the cigarette goes into his head. See, Valve created this model, and the, the cigarette is always attached to the model, but uh, when you don't want it there, they added a, a, a mechanism to just move it. And all it does is move it inside the model so it's no longer visible, although it is still there. So that's kind of fun. All right, so now I want to, I'm going to go ahead and accept this. Now I want to actually create a cigarette and I'm going to put it in his hand. So I'm going to say create an animation set for new model. I'm going to type in SIG and I'm going to find weapons, shells, shell cigarette. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to select it. It's up here. We'll move it over here. So you can see it in the air there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the spy's fingers. If you watch the spy carefully, you'll note that he smokes left-handed. But I'm going to make him right-handed for my purposes. So I'm going to find BIP index 2, which is the tip of his index finger, and BIP middle 2. And I'm going to press click on one, then press Control and click the other. Note that they are both selected now. Now I'm going to expand the cigarette shell, and I'm going to expand the until I can see the root transform. And I'm going to drag both of these. Actually, it looks like it only dragged one, but that's okay. I'm going to drag them both down here. Uh, so we've got BIP index 2 and BIP, uh, BIP middle uh, 2 uh, underscore R are now locked to the root transform of this. 
So then I'm going to grab the whole cigarette shell and I'm going to hit the zero slider here and just drag it all the way across and that zeroes it out. It's still not perfect because you can see that there's a couple of problems. First off, it's backwards, so we'll turn it around. And it's not quite where we want it to be in between his fingers, which is okay, but it's close. Using the zero slider, let us get it to about where we wanted it, and then we'll just uh, we'll use the, the translate tool to get it more precisely aligned between his index and first fingers. But this is kind of nice because now, okay, I'm going to hit enter and accept this. So now it's in his hand. And if I grab his, for example, his right arm, his upper right arm, and move it, you'll notice that the cigarette moved with it. Hooray. And I could even, if I I'll hit escape here, if I grab one of his fingers, like say his index finger, we'll zoom in so you can actually see what's going on here. If I move his index finger, note that the cigarette moves with it. Now it's locked to both of his fingers, so it'll kind of like stick to both of them. And you may want to uh, experiment with only locking it to one or the other, however you want to do it. In my case, I locked it to both his fingers because he's holding it between two fingers. But you can experiment, and as I've said before, I encourage experimentation. So now if I press play on this, uh, he said, put the camera someplace where it doesn't look completely stupid. Press, <laughs> press play. All right. That's very nice. So he's sitting there doing his thing, standing there with a cigarette in his hand. Very cool. So now let's do something more interesting than just having him stand there. I'm going to go over here to the timeline, or excuse me, to the graph editor. And I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the spy the whole, the whole model, I'm going to select the entire spy model, okay? Just click on the root of it. I'm going to go to the top of the clip and I'm going to press M to create a bookmark. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to go to about five seconds in and I'm going to press M to create a bookmark. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab his upper right arm, I'm going to move it up, okay? And then I am going to grab his lower right arm and move it up. And then I think I'll grab his hand and I'm going to extend out the wrist a little bit. So basically he can raise his hand and then put it back down. Now if I press, if I go back here to the top of the clip and press play, well, that's a little bit slow. That's not really what I wanted. I wanted it to be faster than that. So um, I'm going to grab and hit uh, control click on each of these. So the hand, the upper arm, and the lower arm were the things that I modified. And you'll note over here that as I did that, each of these showed up over here in the left. And then I'm just going to grab this marker and I'm going to drag it over to the left. So now I've moved those to one second and we'll see. All right. Okay, so that's nice, except that, okay, when I did this, he raises his arm. And you know what? I think I want him to raise his arm even a little faster. So let's make it about two thirds of a second. Okay, his arm comes up. That's nice. But still, it's not really what I, you know, I don't want that. I want it to go back. I want his hand to go back. So how do I do that? Well, let me show you. I'm going to, again, grab the entire spy model. I'm going to um, go here to the beginning, and I'm going to drag. Notice as I click and drag across all of these, all of these became highlighted. And I'm going to say Edit and Copy. And I'm going to go over here. He said, no, hold on, I'm going to undo the, I didn't want to move that key. Okay, so we'll try this again. Edit and copy. Now let's verify that what we're still seeing, yeah, his hand goes up and doesn't, and doesn't come back down. Okay, so I'm going to go here to about another second or so in, and I'm going to paste it in. And now you'll notice his hand goes up and it comes down, and I could even go here and drag this over so his hand will go up very quickly and go down more slowly. Cool. So again, that's a very simple, quick and dirty kind of thing to show you a little bit, but I think it will give you some insight into how keyframe animation works. Okay, well, and his arm goes through his body and there's a few other things that I didn't like. Uh, again, learning something from Mr. Ugla, Ugly, I'm gonna go ahead and import a sequence here because uh, he's not breathing enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and import the uh, selection menu. You know, I'm gonna stand item one. I'm gonna uncheck generate root motion so it doesn't move him around. Now when I do this, you're gonna note that his body's gonna be in kind of an awkward position, but I can still fix that by just expanding the body and in the motion editor, 
Now with all time selected, I can fix a lot of these issues by just making him stand a little bit more upright and put him back where I kind of want him to be so he doesn't have that odd turned kind of thing. Turn and face the camera. There we go. And again, you can you can tell it's obvious that there's going to be a lot of experimentation in it for you to make some of these things work the way you really want them to. But that's okay. Half of the fun is in the experimentation. But now if I go to the beginning of the clip, you notice that he's bouncing a little bit more and he looks like he's breathing. This is still not perfect because it's not really what I would want if I was doing a real animation. But I do it not to create a real animation, but to give you a sense of what is possible with Source Filmmaker and uh, some of the tricks you can use uh, to make life a little bit easier on yourself. Still trying to figure out. Oh, okay, that's what it was. His spine was. I swear, you got to be a chiropractor to play this game sometimes. All right, so. There we go. So now the last thing I want to do is I'm going to press enter here. Now what I want to do is actually put some smoke on his cigarette. I mean, we've gotten all kinds of other stuff and oh, I'm going to grab him and I'm going to move him up to where he needs to be because he is now inside the floor a bit. So and note now that I've applied some animations to stuff using shift actually sinks him through the floor. So that's something I'm going to fix by just using that. Excuse me. And much better. So now his feet aren't going through the floor. Although he's standing kind of awkwardly, but whatever, he's a spy. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some smoke to the guy. So I'm going to collapse this and I'm going to create an animation set for a new particle system. I'm going to browse, going to find uh, sigsmoke.pcf. Open that. Uh, let's just make it last for a minute and lifetime a minute. Again, these are values you'll want to experiment with, but for our purposes, we're going to uh, just uh, move, we're going to just do the easy part. So let's see here. The, uh, the thing that we want is the cigarette mesh. You're going to need to experiment a little bit with some of these things. The smoke is here. So let's put the cigarette mesh and uh, let's parent the cigarette mesh to control point zero on the, sm uh, on the smoke. And then we're going to grab the smoke and we're going to zero it out. Okay, very nice. So now the smoke is not moved. So obviously I screwed up. Undo that. Undo the apply zero. I believe what I needed to do, I'm going to unlock that, grab the cigarette smoke. I needed to lock it to the transform, not control point zero. So now I'm going to go ahead and zero and again, as I said before, you're going to need to experiment with these things. Ah, much better. Now you notice that the actual particle moved this time. And uh, if you notice also, because I used the zero preset, it lined it up with the rotation of the cigarette. So now I don't have to do anything except move into the directional modifier and just drag the smoke to the tip of the uh, cigarette. Press enter. Again, because particles won't show up until you scrub out of the clip and bring it back in. Now the smoke will show up when we uh, go to the top of the clip, place the camera where we want it, and press play. And we have smoke. And it is attached to the tip of the cigarette. And you can see as I zoom in here, it is looking really good. And so you can use a similar technique uh, to do uh, any of the any of your model animation uh, stuff that you need to do, uh, attaching items to players' hands or to model hands, and then maybe attaching particle systems to those. I encourage you to experiment, and uh, I hope that this has been useful for you. I am Jimmer Linz. This has been your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day, and as always, I thank you for listening. Enjoy using Source Filmmaker.